This is what Ramjet Week has all been building towards. The final review of the week is Toy World's Combustor, a masterpiece scale figure by Dammit. And here we get into my first biggest main complaint with this figure is these stupid damn uh, missile pods because they are freaking spring-loaded. Um, and that's not the biggest problem because the Classics ones were spring-loaded too, but it's the mechanism, the firing mechanism is designed oh so badly. It's designed such that whenever you move this figure, of course now that I'm looking at a black piece we need more light, whenever you move this thing you push on the mechanism. This is how it plugs into the wing and this is the firing mechanism. And so, of course, any adjustment of this thing on the wing means you lift on that and it goes shooting out. This one isn't being so terrible right now. Maybe the other side's the... One of them's really bad. It just always shoots off at the most inopportune times. Um, so anyway, this is Combustor by Toy World. And I know they did all three of the cone heads, and I think they did a uh, Starscream and Thundercracker and Skywarp of this of this mold, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but as you can see, it is gorgeous. It is gorgeously G1, um, only massive. That's as far as I can zoom out. And. Uh, gorgeous. This is a sleek, beautiful jet mode. And I love how it looks. In fact, if we pull out um, yesterday's Why in the World? I do not get auto exposure. If we pull out yesterday's ship, uh, what was this one? I gear Con Air. This one just looks so much better. Um, everything about the Toy World Combustor is better than iGear's effort. No offense, but just this jet mode looks sad and pathetic to me now, and I kind of want to sell it. There we go, let's do that. Um, yeah, just the, the wings being so much smaller, the engines being so much smaller, the, the top of it being so flat, this just looks awful to me today, comparing it to that. Oh, see, there we go. Stupid freaking fracking uh, missile launchers, because it just fires. Very poor design. Uh, let's throw a Henke ramjet up here so you can see it follows the same... Design, design cues. Um, they're just you know a hundred times more beautiful. Uh, it's got landing gears, and they are springy, boing boing, which is good because the way these ones store up in the feet, you have to pry this thing open which pegs in so well it's kind of a pain to get open and you just fold it down in there and it actually if you can see in there it actually collides with this so you actually have to compress the spring to get it in there a little bit which means that when you open it it kind of pops out so you can get it so that's great the uh, nose landing gear however is a different story it's also springy um, but it it's two pieces, and this piece does not fit in the housing very well. It does spring. It's got a little door. But once you close this, you can never get that thing out. There's no way to reach in there and grab it unless you have tiny fingers. Um, and now that I've put it away, I will never get it out again. Uh, because I don't remember where I put my tweezers that I had to use to get it out. But it's, it's in there forever now. So that's a minor problem. Another problem I kind of have with this jet mode is 
This side looks great, except for some screw holes there. If you turn the ship around to the other side, oh, there are all these screw holes. So the uh, left side is definitely the photogenic side of the, of the jet mode. But oh, I just can't get over how gorgeous this ramjet is. Um, I kind of wish I could overexpose it a little more so we could just see the the beautiful maroon color. It's let's see if I can get some more light. Zooming in a little bit, I think you can see the maroon is actually speckled and silvery, and it just looks really great in person. Um, and I think the stickers or decals or whatever are kind of metallic-y too. Oh, I killed one of the skulls. This thing has four engines, um, or, or yeah, whatever. They do show through on the other underside, which um, is in contrast to the official MP ramjet, which I do not have. Um, I actually do like this look better. This thing clips together in super solidly um, with, oh, geez, that one's tight. with uh, two exceptions that I was going to complain about after I put the landing gears away. But now I can't open this one. Oh, wow. Super tight, um, except this just does have a small tendency to droop a little bit. And these, um, because these, due to how do they transform, this moves in around and this moves up and down. And these are the only things that just don't really peg in solidly like everything else. Other than that, this thing is super duper solid and and just gorgeous looking. There is no way in hell I'm going to try to transform this on camera. Um, it actually just took me 15 minutes to figure out how to do looking at the instructions because the instruction sheet is a bunch of different, 43 different steps the way they do it, although I think they have each hand individually and it's just, it's such a tiny little picture. It's difficult to tell in some places what they're doing. When I was trying to go from robot mode to jet, this step here was not very clear on how to unpeg the canopy from the chest bit. Um, because the instructions don't really indicate that it's pegged in, but it is pegged in super tight. Um, before we go on to robot mode though, I do want to point out the box. It will fit on camera because it has got some great artwork. Oh, that's as far out as we go. Um, it's quite narrow because it comes packaged in jet mode. But then the box that this comes in from Toy World is twice this thick because it comes with two of these little boxes, which are very narrow, featureless cardboard boxes. Because these little boxes contain this stand, two of these stands. It comes with two of these bases, which with the notches and the pegs over here, they plug in, they can plug into each other either to make one really big base or to make a, uh, you know, a frame, a, a floor and a wall or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's also some little doohickeys to help plug the two together so that it stays solid. And it has a, a stand arm. Which, let's demonstrate it. For flight mode, refocus, can you see? That little square there on his crotch, that actually indents. Let's see if I can find something to push on it with. If I can get the glare in there just right. This little bit is kind of spring-loaded. So that plugs into that knob, um, which is circular on the top and square on the bottom. And so that will hold it um, square, straight. And it is very tight. And I kind of don't like doing it. And then you plug these two holes into there. And they're very tight also. And so I kind of can't get it in there very well. But then it holds ramjet, or combustor, sorry, at a nice little flight angle. Although, as you can see, there's quite a bit of wobble to this um, arm. 
and I don't really know what they could have done other than maybe mold a, a support line on it lengthwise. But hey, it looks neat when it holds still. Holds it at a good angle. I like that. Um, however, I, like I said, it came with two of these, and one of the other stand arms, the peg has broken off there. So I don't know that I'll be able to use the second arm for, uh, for display. So the transformation was complicated. I don't think it was as bad as, as the uh, original MP, what is it, 3? Starscream and Skywarp that I have. But just because I was very unfamiliar with it and the instructions were kind of poor, I did have some trouble with this part. I, there were lots about it that I, I did like quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I can show them off here. These, this, this center bit unfolds and ends up on the side of the canopy as the sides of his chest. The legs, um, rather than sliding, the thighs sliding into here, as on, say, Masterpiece Optimus Prime, um, which I hate because on mine is one of them's loose and it just kind of will collapse all the time. This actually opens up in a complicated, or actually the back. The back opens up in a neat fashion and they unfold and the feet, here I can do the feet, that's easy. The feet fold up inside the fuselage as well and that's really cool. And the feet are very heavy metal die cast. So he kind of has a solid base to stand on, although because the wings aren't transformed, he can't stand up right now. So I will come back in a second after I have transformed this. Nope, one more thing before we leave jet mode. Um, I do love the sculpt of, of these uh, rockets or whatever you want to call them. It's nice and sharp and pretty and pointy and detailed. The wing have the wings have two mount points. You can have them on the outside, which is where I tend to put them because I like just like that silhouette. Plus, it is similar to the Henke one, where they're kind of further outside the wing. Um, but you can also mount them closer inside, which I don't, you know it gets hidden. I don't like that look as much, but it's there. And here is Combustor in his uh, robot mode. And it looks like he actually is still just slightly out of frame. Because he is big and tall. Um, here he is next to Henke. Which is tiny. And that is not in focus. Um, who else should we compare him to? How about Masterpiece Sideswipe? towers over sideswipe as he should and here is masterpiece uh, Sadwave so he's a little bit big um, I don't know how tall he's supposed to be but I'm quite alright with him being a little bit taller than Sadwave um, here he is next to whatever masterpiece this was um, this is the Walmart exclusive version of the first Starscream thing and wow Ramjet's way taller also Ramjet is, Ramjet is at least oh 10 15 20 times better than this awkward uh, piece of garbage fiddly so enough of that stuff although the deco is really nice I uh, although I wish this was a darker red it's kind of orange um, but, ooh, the panel laning on the wings fantastic but yeah, that Starscream is, comparatively speaking, garbage compared to this thing. This thing is poseable and pretty solid and huge and everything great in the world. Um, he's got a good angry, grumpy face. I don't believe that there were any alternate ones. If there are, I have forgotten about it because I didn't look in the package beforehand. Um... So this 
Robot mode is really where these uh, stupid spring-loaded missile launchers becomes a problem. And I'd forgotten that the spring actually fell out of this one. And I'm going to rip it out of this one. I'm probably going to super glue them shut because the, the, again, the firing mechanism is the peg that attaches it to the figure. And this shoulder, and there we go. This shoulder is, the flap is, is independently movable, which is great. Except, you know, it's attached to this in a stupid way. So whenever you try and adjust this, you're always making the missile fall out. Or, you know, the spring-loaded one, shoot. Um, they do still look cool, like that, but, you know, they look better with the full tip. So I am more than likely going to just glue these suckers in because... This is aggravating. But other than that, robot mode, I think, is a pretty great success. Uh, getting here was a giant pain in the ass. The leg panels that open up so that his legs can fold inside, they clip in so well that in jet mode, I could not get them to unpeg. Um, and I think to get this to work in robot mode, you have to you have to unfold the top and the bottom, and then it can slide out and get out of the way. And this is neat, except you have to slide this hinge, and if you forget, you're going to wrench it open and break things. This was impossible to unclip. I seriously spent probably five minutes on each side trying to unpeg it, and then trying to work it into place correctly so it pegs in. It, it does peg in nice and firmly in robot mode, but... That was a pain. Um, again, unpegging all of this center stuff so you could move it around was not as fun as I would have liked it to be. Um, this is how the instructions tell you to have them folding the, the wings back and folding the back wings back. But I mean, he's got this beautiful maroon. You might as well flip it out a little bit so you can see it. Um, and it's got a double hinge there, so you could have it out forward, but then it will run into the arms a little bit more. So if you just flip it out a little bit like that, and I like to leave his, his wings actually all the way out, sort of give the impression of a cape. It does obviously make him a lot more wide and take up more shelf space that way, but, you know, I just think he should have some... Uh, color to him. Uh, the wings are on rails that you can slide up and down so you can use this spur that is completely out of frame. So you can use this spur as a counterpoint to the inner one so that he has a bit more balance. That helps a lot. Ideally these would have a a pegging or a, a stop to the hinge at about 45 degrees. So it doesn't have to be all the way back, and it doesn't have to be all the way out. It can just be like that. I don't know why he feels like he's leaning to one side. He's a little drunk. <clears throat> but anyway, um, posability is really good. Or fairly good. You know, these things are on ball joints, and the, the engines back here are on joints that are really stiff. But I think they're ball joints, and you can move them around if you need to. Um, again, this works. Moving this up and down is the best way to to help him balance. His uh, hip joint is really interesting that I hadn't really realized before until this time when I was transforming it. The uh, the forward hinge is separate. is a completely separate weird bit, um, or can be. Maybe it's just it's got two two hinges in there. So it's sort of got a hinge in the upper thigh, but plus this peg rotates as well. So you can I'm not really sure why you would need to do it like that, but you can. Click. That's weird. Um, outward motion, knee. Is it it is a, a double jointed knee. I'll try and keep it in the frame. So it's got quite a bit of range. Before it starts running into the wings, um, the hip skirts 
move and get up out of the way. So that's quite nice. He does have a waist swivel. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see him again. The arms have the shoulder and outward motion, and this just smoothly moves out of the way if you use the arm. But if you try and use the missile because it's right there, well, you're just going to fire it. Uh, the elbow is, I believe, double jointed as well, so he's got quite a bit of curl there to his arm. Uh, bicep swivel, the hand swivels, and each of the fingers is individually jointed. Let's see if I can, can stand. Little Mac, there we go. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but um, also it does not have the the slot in the in his hand that say Soundwave and uh, Sideswipe do. So he can't hold Soundwave's gun and he can't hold Sideswipe's gun. And what he does have is it looks like a five millimeter peg um, outline. I'm not quite sure what you call it, but there. Can you see that? However, I have this Megatron with a 5mm peg, and maybe because it's not um, a perfect column, it's an oblong shape, it does not stay in his hand, and it would look comically undersized if it did anyway. But, um, but because of that little ridge in there to give it the 5mm shape, something like the Megatron that came with Soundwave does not hold in his hand very well because there's that bit sticking out in the middle of his palm that interferes. Oop, I just ripped his thumb off. Uh, but the fingers are individually jointed, so I don't know, you could do something fun like flip people off or, or uh, you know, double horns or something. Although with a lack of a thumb now, because I just ripped that off. But. So well posable, uh, beautiful, huge. I'm gonna call it masterpiece scale. I don't, I don't know what's, I don't remember what scale he is supposed to be compared to Soundwave. But this is my ramjet, and if I had to throw away all of the other ones, honestly, I would not be upset because this one is great, and I recommend it. This is the most recent one I got a couple months ago, a few months ago at this point probably. TF Source had a clearance sale on this on this figure. They had all three of them for a crazy good deal. So I picked up picked up the set so I could have Ramjet. I sold Thrust right away. I'm indecisive about um, Elegy or Dirge because eh, blue and gold's a good color combination but uh, anyway masterpiece scale toy world combustor is a big win in my opinion although the transformation is fiddly and I haven't quite figured out how to unpeg everything at the right times but it pegs together solid in both modes it's poseable it looks good what more could anyone ask I, I, I wish I had a good Starscream to go with it. I'll have to look and see if Toy World made one. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching Ramjet Week. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try to review stuff every now and again. Um, this is actually one of my favorite figures that I purchased last year. I was going to throw some quick you know, best figures of 2017 out on Twitter, but because I always get too lazy and don't finish putting such a list together until... February, I thought I'll try and review all of the figures this year that I thought were the best things I got last year. And Ramjet here is the first one on the list. So thank you for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave me any constructive criticisms or feedbacks you have. And, and uh, stay tuned for more reviews in the future.